can't wait for the future. Whoa! What just happened? This is cool. So the future of action cameras may have just changed changed a lot with the power of AI with the Insta360 Ace Pro. Yeah, is it futuristic? Whoa! Now that is actually really, really cool. So in this video, I'm going to answer the question, is the Insta360 Ace Pro, is it the best action camera of 2023? Well, grab some popcorn because I'm going to cover a lot of stuff in this video. And I'm also going to put chapters down below for those of you that want to skip around to different sections. But do me a favor, watch the entire video because it does help with YouTube's algorithm and it pushes this video out to a lot more eyes out there. And that'll make me smile inside because it'll help this channel grow. But let's get to uh, the Insta360 Ace Pro. So if you want the short answer, yes, I think that it is the best action camera of 2023 and I'll tell you why. And by the way, before I get into why, let's make something clear. Insta360, they did not send me the Ace Pro for review. I bought this with my own money. So all my opinions are strictly mine and I'm giving you an honest user consumer's review of this action camera. But this video does have a sponsor and that is art. Let's put a little bit more on them later. So let's make one thing clear. Okay, the Insta360 products that are out there, they are a little bit more expensive than their competition like the GoPro Hero 12 or the DJI Action 4, but there's a big caveat. There's never been an issue, at least nothing that I've ever experienced with any of the Insta360 products that I have. And that dates back to the Insta360R, if you remember that. And this is the uh, dual module. So you got the 4K module and then the 360 module that'll plug into it. I've never had an issue with this one. Then there's the Insta360 X2. No problems with this one at all. The Insta360 X3. No problems with this one at all either. And then we can't forget about the uh, little Insta360 Go 3, which is the first one that brought out the little flip up screen. I had no issues with it. And, you know, I, d I mentioned that for a reason because when it comes to companies, and a lot of companies, you know, quality control can be an issue. And that's fine because we are all human and humans put these things together. But if you remember, like the GoPro Hero 9 had the audio popping problem. And then there were some freezing issues with the five. The six was, I didn't like the six at all. And then the DJI Action 3 was out of focus. And I did some videos about the focus issue with the Action 3. Now the Action 4 solved all of that, but now we're talking about the Ace Pro. So let's talk about the Ace Pro and how it performs. And by the way, if you're new here and you like action cameras, you like mirrorless cameras, you like microphones, gimbals, all that sort of stuff and tech reviews, consider subscribing. Okay, now back to the video. Now I'm not gonna cover all the specs of the Ace Pro and I'm gonna tell you why, because it's been covered by hundreds and hundreds of YouTubers already about all the specs, but it does have the largest image sensor in its class of action camera with a one over 1 1.9 inch image sensor and it's got a quad bear image sensor. Now, I'm not gonna go into the details about what a quad bear image sensor is, but I would suggest that you go check out the uh, channel Make Art Now. He's got a great explanation of a quad bear sensor and how it performs and how it relates to low light performance and image quality. Now I've compared the Ace Pro in a couple of previous videos like to the uh, Action 4 and also to the GoPro Hero 12. I even compared it to the Insta360 Go 3 and I'll put that video right up here and I'll just let you kind of look at some of the sample footage. But you know, the Ace Pro performed very, very well. There was some scenarios in low light and I'll put that low light video up here right now between the Ace Pro and it was the reigning king of action cameras regarding low light. And that is, let me reach for it here, the DJI Action 4. It was the reigning king because this thing was great in low light. But I will say that the Ace Pro 
is a little bit better in low light. And in that low light video that I did side by side comparison, there was some situations where the Ace Pro definitely outshined the Action 4. But in a couple of situations there, the Action 4 actually looked slightly better than what the Ace Pro did, but I'm still gonna give that nod to the Ace Pro overall for low light performance. Now, given the fact that this is a completely new design of an action camera, and there's a lot of people that are worried about this back screen. Now, Insta360, they have done some rigorous testing with this screen. Now, according to Insta360, they have opened and closed the rear screen 10 thousand times and there was never an issue with it they froze the camera they stuck it into water and would sit there and push it on and off for recording to see how it performed so they did a lot of rigorous testing with this action camera and i think that insta360 overall they do that with all of their cameras that they come out with that they really rigorously test it and it gives us the consumer a final end product that you don't have to worry about. So what's another thing that I like about the Insta360 Ace Pro? I like that it can record 8K at 24 frames per second. Now, I know there's gonna be a lot of people out there that they don't want 8K, they don't care about 8K, they're never gonna use 8K. But for the few people out there, and I'm one of them, I really like the fact that you can use 8K at 24 frames per second because that 8K looks crispy and sharp. It looks really, really good. And for me, I like being able to punch in on a 4K timeline and not lose any image quality at all. So that 8K to me is a big plus. And of course, there's gonna be a lot of people that aren't crazy about the uh, AI effects that you can do with the Ace Pro. Me personally, I like the AI effects. And if you think about artificial intelligence, I mean, between chat GPT and everything else, AI is going to be in our lives from now on. So you're going to see more and more camera companies, whether it's action cameras, whether GoPro Hero 13, if they're actually even going to call it a 13, but if they come out with the 13, it may have some AI features to it. DJI may bring some AI features. It's just part of our future. We might as well deal with it but I do like it and I like the app with Insta360 because it is very powerful. I've never had a hiccup with it. You can do so many creative things for it and it's not just for YouTube videos. You can do it for Instagram, you can do um, for TikTok videos. The app is very powerful, never had a hiccup with it at all. Now the build quality of the Ace Pro is in my opinion, fantastic. I think that this thing is built like a beast. But I will say that the Action 4 and the GoPro Hero 12 are also very ruggedly built. But Insta360, they went up a notch. Yes, it is a little bit heavier, and part of that's gonna be because of the rear flip-up screen and maybe some bigger internals inside. Uh, but what a great build on this. And I really don't think that I have to feel like I'm gonna have to baby this camera at all. Yes. It's possible you could damage the rear screen, but once again, Insta360, they were dropping huge ball bearing on the rear screen, they were dropping on the front screen, and it survived that. So kind of keep that in mind. Rigorous testing was definitely done with this camera. Another thing I really like about the Ace Pro that uh, what Insta360 has done is use the magnetic clip. Now, I'm really glad that a lot more companies are starting to follow this whole magnetic clip thing because it is great. It's a great way to mount it on the things. And also you've still got the GoPro finger style so that you can use it with your existing GoPro mounts for different mounting options. But the fact that it's magnetic is really, really nice. Now there's some that have said that the Ace Pro is out of focus, but when you consider that it's got a larger image sensor and the lens has been co-engineered or co-designed with Leica, there's gonna be a little bit more additional focus distance that's going to be required. Now, Insta360 says that it is 1.3 feet, which works out to 15.6 inches is your minimum focus distance. So what I did was I just set it up to 16 inches. So I've got the Ace Pro here in this video clip at 16 inches. And then I also compared it to the Action 4 and the GoPro Hero 12. So first up is Ace Pro at 16 inches. 
Now it's punched in at 200%. Now let's look at the action four at 16 inches. And now let's punch it into 200%. And last but not least, the GoPro Hero 12 at 16 inches. And now let's punch that into 200%. Now let's do a little side-by-side -side of all three of these cameras, punch in at 200% and tell me down in the comment section below, did you see an out of focus issue or which one did you think was out of focus or better in focus? Cause I'm really interested to hear your opinion. Cause to me, the Ace Pro did not look like it was out of focus. So now let's move on to a low light test with the Ace Pro. Now I had a viewer ask me, how does it do in indoor situations? Not so much low light, but just indoor if you wanted to do some, maybe some vlogging inside the house. So what I did was, here's a little indoor clip in my studio. So I had a viewer ask, how does the Ace Pro work indoor lighting? So this is the lighting inside the studio with all the studio lights off, just using the overhead fluorescent lights, just so you can get a rough idea of how it handles indoor lighting situations. Yeah, the Ace Pro, it is that good. And now let's take the Ace Pro outside and compare its low light, not to the Action 4, let's compare it to the Pocket 3. Now, yes, the Pocket 3 is not an action camera, but it is the king right now in low light regarding anything pocketable as far as a pocketable camera. So let's compare the Ace Pro Pocket 3 right now. So now let's talk about stabilization with the Ace Pro. And if you know anything about Insta360, all of their products are really, really good with their flow state technology for stabilization. And I will tell you that the Ace Pro is definitely no slouch. I put it on my e-bike and took it out into a grassy area. And trust me, the grassy area is very, very rough. It bounces around a lot in there. If you look at the footage that came out of the Ace Pro, it looks like it was actually on a gimbal. So yes, the stabilization is extremely good on the Ace Pro. Now I know a lot of people are gonna be asking about overheating with the Ace Pro regarding, you know, it does have this back screen, so that could be pushing up against the back of the camera and holding a little bit of heat but I will tell you that I got 88 minutes in 4K30 with the Ace Pro. That's right, and it never overheated. The battery just died on it. Now 4K 120, I got, what did I get? I got 66 minutes at 4K 120. 
which in my opinion is fantastic. And like I said, it never overheated, just the battery died. So now I've kind of given you all the pros about the Insta360 Ace Pro and how I think it is actually the best action camera of 2023. But like any great thing, there are some flaws or some things I came across. So let's talk about some of the cons of the Ace Pro. Now, earlier I said, I like the AI features. I think that they're really cool. And I think that it's gonna be the future, whether it's of action cameras or mirrorless cameras, but it is definitely gonna be the future. But I saw a lot of people that were reviewing the Ace Pro and they said, oh yeah, when it comes to the AI thing, to process the AI on the phone, it would only take just a couple of minutes. Well, you know, the con part is, it can only record a four second clip. So let's say that you recorded a 20 second clip, you have to kind of edit up to four seconds worth of whatever that you wanted. And that four seconds takes anywhere between seven and 10 minutes to process on the phone. That's a long time. And then you still have to transfer it from your phone to your computer or to your desktop in my case, to be able to edit with it and make a video like this. I understand it's the, we're kind of in the infancy of AI and how it processes. And I like the fact that Insta360, they even offer the AI function, but given the fact that, you know, just keep it in mind, it will take seven to 10 minutes just for a four second clip. That may be a deal breaker for some people out there. Ah yes, the non-removable lens. So if you remember GoPro, they came out with the GoPro Hero 8 and it was not a removable lens. Now out of all my GoPros, I've got the five all the way through the 12 and I've never damaged any one of them except for one. And which one was it? It's gonna be the Hero 8. I actually dropped it, got a little nick on the outside of the lens. Luckily for me, it does not affect the image quality at all. But on the pro side of Insta360 with the Ace Pro and its non-removable lens, Insta360, they will replace the front lens cover. It's not the lens, it's this front lens cover, but they will replace it for one year after purchase. Now, it won't cost you anything, but shipping. You're gonna have to ship it to Insta360 to one of their locations, and then you're gonna have to pay shipping back. But at least this way, it gives you a little bit of peace of mind. 8-bit video. Yes, it records 8-bit video, not 10-bit. And you know, 10-bit's been the rage here lately. Uh, between the GoPro Hero 12 and then you've got the DJI Action 4, which records 10-bit, but that 10-bit, it's chroma sampling is only 420, it's not 422, so kind of keep that in mind. But I will say that the 8-bit that comes out of the 8 Pro is very, 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 very nice because it is in an HDR setup, so you get a nice dynamic range out of the image of the Ace Pro and it also records at 170 megabits per second in 4K30, which is fantastic considering it's higher than the GoPro Hero 12 or the Action 4. So a higher bit rate packs in a lot more data into that video file. Will Insta360 release a firmware update to give the uh, Ace Pro 10-bit? I'm not sure, I haven't heard any word on it at all. But I wouldn't be surprised considering the processing power that the camera is capable of. I think that they may, and don't quote me, but I think that they may bring out 10-bit in a future firmware update, at least I hope so. Now, all the music that you've heard throughout this entire video is from Artlist, and why should you choose Artlist? It is your one-stop shop for everything that you need to be creative on YouTube or for commercial projects. Music, very simple to look up, if you need sound effects, they've got it. If you need visual effects, some footage, some supplemental footage, they've got that covered. They've even got software for you. They got plugins, they got templates. You name it, they have it all. And the greatest thing is once you download a song, it is yours to use forever. Click my link in the description below to get an extra two months off of your subscription art list. Artless Max, take your creativity to the max. So that's my review of the Insta360 Ace Pro. I think it's a fantastic camera. Tell me down in the comment section your thoughts about this action camera. Yes, it is a little bit more pricey than the others, but is it worth it to you? To me, yes, I give it two thumbs up. I think it's definitely worth it if you want some advanced features. And as always, I'll catch you in the next review. Bye-bye.